Welcome back to the channel guys, and today's video is something that a lot of people don't really concentrate on on Football Manager, but it is one of the most important, if not the most important part of the entire game. Let's do it. That most important part of the game, as you can probably guess by the thumbnail, is Team Cohesion. Now, on this save, this is my Livorno Youth Academy Challenge save. This is our Let's Play that we've been on YouTube, we can't sign any players. So that is why our team cohesion is at the absolute maximum. Well, it's like 95% at the maximum, right? So it says the players will be willing to do anything for each other. Now that is one of the most important aspects on FM. So if you think about all the good teams of the past that have overachieved, like your Leicester's in 2015, 16, this is the reason, obviously, tactically, they were good. They obviously had good players. I'm not saying that Leicester didn't have that, but the overriding thing that Leicester had when I watched them is that every single player on the pitch knew where every other player was going to be at every second of every game. And that is what team cohesion is. So, it says they would be willing to do anything for each other, but it also says underneath that people might not have ever looked at, it says the team's collective mental state has been seen a significant improvement. This will greatly improve player positioning during matches, so they'll know where each other is. So if someone's gone up the pitch, they'll cover things like that. They know exactly where each other is when they've got the ball, like... When someone's on the overlap, they don't even have to look, they can just play it. Players will experience a considerable, imp considerable improvement to their vision and reaction to events unfolding when playing. So like I said, players overlapping or a player's making a run, they will just know that they're going to make that run and they can play the ball. And vice versa, the person that's receiving the ball will know that that player on the ball is about to play the pass, right? It's the reason, It's well, it's, it's not just the only reason, but it's the massive biggest reason, alongside tactical familiarity, which was my previous video that I did on this sort of informational type videos. Those two together, the tactical familiarity and the team cohesion together, they will allow you to play well above your players' attributes. Well above. So if you're a mid-table team, you can definitely, definitely challenge you for the Champions League and stuff like that. On the flip side, the things that bring it down are signing players. Now, obviously, on this Youth Academy Challenge, if you guys are new to the channel, I'll explain. If you're not, you don't need to listen to this part. So while people are listening to this part, if you want to just scroll down and hit the subscription button, that would be amazing. The reason why it's so high on this save is we're not signing any players. We're in 2032 right now, and I have literally signed zero players. That is the challenge of this save. Zero players bought. So play, buying players is the reason this comes down. Now, you can negate that slightly, and I'll show you how to in a second. But when you're buying players, this goes down. Now, it goes down at a different level. Sometimes it goes down a little bit. Sometimes it goes down a lot when you sign players. It all depends on how they fit in with your squad. So if you get a scout report on someone, and it says in the scout report that they will likely fit in with your players and adapt, it will go down less. If you've got a scout report and a player, and it says that they will struggle to adapt, then obviously the cohesion will go down a little bit more. That's just how it is. It's all to do with at hidden attributes like um, adaptability, uh, things like personality, media handling style, if it's the same as, as the rest of your squad, etc. If you sign a player that's maybe not the same in terms of personality, then they're just going to take a bit of more of a hit on the team cohesion. And it affects all the players. Don't know how, don't know why, because obviously if you bench that player, it wouldn't affect the player on the pitch. But on a football manager, they can only represent it really by the whole squad. So... It does take a bit of a hit, like I said. I will now go on to the, the other save that I've got. I, just, I play it offline just for fun. And I will show you another reason how you guys can see which players will make a massive difference to this or will not. So obviously on my Deportivo save, I do sign players. So the team cohesion is a lot lower than when I don't sign players, clearly. But this is about seven games into the season and our team cohesion is on green. Now I made sure when I went up to La Liga, which is our first season in La Liga, I made sure that I was taking a look at this screen after every single signing. I clicked I clicked sign, accept at the bottom. I clicked continue, he joined, and then I'd check it. See if it went down a lot, see if it went down a little bit. And a lot of the players, I made sure when I signed them in their scout reports, it did say that they would adapt to the squad. If they didn't, I wouldn't sign them unless they was really good and they was going to improve our team quality-wise, right? If that's the case, just sign them, I would say. Uh, don't miss out on a bargain or a really good deal for a good player just because they don't fit in the squad. That's ridiculous. But what I'm saying on these types of videos is I'm just letting you guys know little tips, little tricks, little things you can look out for that gives you gains in the match engine. So, like I mentioned, our team cohesion is on the green quite nicely. It's like 20%, I would say, something like that, 15 20%. It's quite nice. Obviously, you don't want it in the red ever. If it's in the red, I will give you another couple of tips later on in this video uh, to help that to start with. But 
What we can do to stop it going down is if we click on dynamics page and then we can click on social groups. Right, now, obviously you guys know about this screen. I've got four groups here. On my other side, the Livorno one, I think we've got two. So obviously these guys down here are finding themselves their ways into these new groups. So as you can see, new signings, Yakubu, Latomba, Pienko, Fonseca, Lopez, Adzic, Sanchez, Bergvall's not a new signing. A lot of those signings have gone into the core social group because I made sure when I signed them, it said that they was adaptable and they were, and they were just going to like join straight in and hit the ground running type thing. Now, obviously, there's a few players like Stefanovic and Illich that haven't fit in. But if I show you those guys, I had to bring them in. Illich is our main centre-back. He's fantastic. 22, costs like 3 million. And Stepanovic, he's 21. He's very, very good. He's four-star current ability and he only costs like 3.6 million. Like I mentioned before, don't miss out on some signings just because they're really good. They were four-star current ability players. That's a very good player for any team. So I went ahead and signed those guys. These guys in the secondary social group, these have been here for a long time. They've been here for a couple of years, so it doesn't make sense really why they've not fit in or why they're just with themselves. They're in the I mean, that's fine if they're in the second social group because this guy's the captain anyway and the players like him. So that's not. it's usually the others area that they don't fit into a particular social group. So obviously we're going to have different social groups in a club. That's absolutely fine. The other thing I'm going to mention as well is on the right-hand side here, it says the core group are in very high spirits. They're all pulling in the same direction and should have no cause for complaint for anything other than the most serious of issues. The secondary group are happy and should have little reason to find fault with the way things are going. The secondary group B have a very strong sense of team spirit, are extremely happy and should have no cause for complaint. So the secondary group B, these these guys here, it says has a very strong sense of team spirit. Now they will have, because like I mentioned, these guys have all been here for two two seasons. Um, Nuosu and Villares have been here for three since the start. Uh, Olorana and Kone have been here since the last season, so they've been here too. So that makes sense. So let's have a look at your assistant manager's feedback. But the most important part of this little wall of text here is the bottom part because it says the following recommended players have been scouted and are likely to fit in with, ex with existing social groups within the squad. Pablo Torre, Ilias Akamak, Javi Guerra, Nico and Matthias Braunoda. So those guys, I've scouted them all. I've scouted the, other, the first three or four players are because they're young Spanish players and I like to buy in young Spanish players whenever I can because I'm managing in Spain. They're homegrown and all that good stuff. So it's nice to know. Obviously, a lot of them are very expensive for me right now, so I can't bring them in. But an interesting one is Matthias Bernardo. So, wrong guy. Is this guy here. He's Austrian, I'm pretty sure. Now, I don't need any centre midfielders at the moment, but if I do, he will be one that I'll be looking at because he fits in with our squad very, very well. Now, obviously, it says here he's ill difficulty finding him. He's into the core group, but he may fit into the second group, right? So that's absolutely fine as well. If you see that, if they fit into the secondary group, that's all fine as well. Obviously, what you don't want is a, is a red message in there, and it says that they just won't adapt to the squad, and uh, it will be in this little situation here. So, like I said, the players that you've scouted, the be the ones that will fit in most with your squad in, in a certain group, they will appear down here at the bottom. So keep your eye on that part as well. That's really important. So obviously, in pre-season, when you're signing players, let's say you've gone up to get promoted and your squad's not good enough and you've signed maybe 12, 15 players because we all do that quite often. You don't want this to go into the red and then start the season and it's in the red and then you start off on a really horrendous run and you can't get a win together in the top division. You're looking at relegation. And then what happens on FM is morale is so important as well in the club atmosphere. So you start the season on red team cohesion. Your players don't know what they're doing. Everything's in a mess. You start getting a few losses that you maybe shouldn't have got beforehand if you didn't take care of this. The morale goes down. And we, like I said, we know morale is so important on Football Manager. And then you just get into a situation where it just compounds an issue. And we're just getting loss after loss after loss. You guys are struggling, changing formation. And then that's taking a hit on your tactical familiarity. So then you've got the trifecta, I call it, which is a team cohesion in red, the club atmosphere in red, and your tactical familiarity all the way down because you're swapping and changing, desperate to try and find results and good formations. And it's a mess. We don't want that on this channel. We don't want that. I'm not going to show you guys how to play the game in terms of download these tactics. It's amazing. I'm going to show you guys how to take care of your overall club. And then you guys can put all this together and you will have a meta well-run club, a more enjoyable atmosphere and a more enjoyable sense of enjoyment on the game, right? We've jumped back over to our Italian save in Livorno, the Youth Academy Challenge. And I'm just going to show you guys the power of team cohesion. So obviously we're not signing anybody. So as we noticed at the start of this video, 
this really high. It's like 95% full. Now we are fourth in Serie B. I'm going to show you the season preview. Now that's the odds of the bookmakers give you to win the title, right? Now we are at the bottom and we aren't newly promoted. We've been in this division for three or four seasons. We've got the playoffs every single season, but this season, it feels like we're a little bit better. Like, obviously, make sure you go and watch the series if you're really interested in this save. It's really cool. I'll show you all the players, the development of the young players that are coming through the academy, how we introduce them, what we train them in, all that stuff. But mainly, what I'm trying to show you here is the fact that at 350 to 1, we have no right being in fourth spot and three points off promotion automatically to Serie A. So this is our team report, and again, I'm just going to show you guys the level of my players compared to this division, because what I want to do, I want to show you guys how bad they are, it just makes you guys realise how important the team cohesion is, because that is the reason that we're so high up. So, we're just going to have a quick check at this page, it's in the squad planner on the report, if you want to have a look at the comparison, and it shows you guys every area of the pitch, your goalkeepers, your defenders, your midfielders, your attackers, your physical attributes, your mental attributes, and your technical attributes compared to the rest of your division. So this highest green line here is the highest in Serie B. We've got the highest decision makers in Serie B. Now my teams have the highest decision makers usually in every single save I ever do because I look for players with good decisions on saves that I can sign players on, it's on Twitch um, or it's on YouTube. I make sure I sign players with good decisions. If they've got low decisions, I don't sign them now. On this save, I can't sign players, so I'm at the mercy of the youth intake gods with my players. If I see a player with good, decent decisions, then it's good. If I see a player with bad decisions, what I'll do is I will hard focus in their individual focus page. I will hard focus final third as the as the focus because that gives me good composure and decision making. It's mainly for the decision making because I feel like decision making is the most important attribute on football manager because every single thing that you do on a football pitch all life is a decision. Do I make a decision to post this video today? Do I make a decision to hit record? Or do I make a decision to make this video a bit longer? Everything's a decision. Every single thing. You guys are now thinking maybe you want to subscribe. Yes, you do, by the way. Hit the subscribe button. Everything's a decision. Same as a football pitch. Do I want to pass short? Do I want to pass long? Do I pass now? Do I pass after another touch? So I really hold value in decision making. So it makes sense to me why my players... I've got really high decision making. 12.48 on average across the whole squad is really, really good. And I really like that. First touch, we are one of the lowest. We are 17th um, passing as well. Down here, we have got an average passing of 9.29, which is 17th. This little line here, by the way, the little ones in the middle, this is average. The average in the league. And obviously, the below at the bottom is the worst. So strength, we are the weakest team. But that's probably because we're the youngest team. So that makes sense. We've got the lowest aggressi aggression in our team as well. Um, we've got one of the lowest work rates, one of the lowest teamworks, and one of the lowest leaderships. Now, you guys can't see that. I'll just remove my camera box real quick. There you go. So you guys can see that for this little area of, of, the, uh, of the video. If I look at my defenders, again, we've got good marking and good positioning. But again, I really hold value in those two because I like to use my defenders' focus as defensive positioning. That's really good. But again, we've got one of the lowest headers. We've got just under the average tacklers. Not really high jumpers. The, the weakest team in the league. We've got the slowest team in terms of acceleration in the league. And we've got really low 17th in pace. So midfield, again, decision making is really high, which is really nice. But everything else is under average. Tackling's high for midfielders. We've got quite decent tacklers in midfield. But we've not got much quality in attack. I thought actually our attack might be quite good because we've got like a nice good striker. But our off the ball is higher than average. Our anticipation is higher than average. But everything else is lower than average by quite a lot. We're quite slow in our attack. We're just not that good. Now we're going to talk about two ways that you guys can improve team cohesion. Before we was talking about signings and how to make it drop a lot less. But now we're going to actually make sure you guys know how to make sure it goes up in pre-season. Because pre-season is the most important thing. Obviously there's a reason you can do it in the season as well. But the main thing for me is matches. So in pre-season, I arrange eight friendly matches. Um, I covered this in the last video with the tactical familiarity. That's the quickest way to improve tactical familiarity is play matches. So I give eight friendlies. But it also helps with team cohesion because the more the players play together, the more they know what each other's doing, right? That just makes total sense. So if you can get more games in pre-season, please do it. So what I do is I give eight and I do them like two a week. So I do... One on maybe like Wednesday, one on Saturday, then Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday for four weeks. So there's eight games in four weeks in preseason. And that way, what I do is I just I just rotate 
um, after every game. I'll let the assistant manager play it and then I'll get to the next match. And then if anyone's tired, I just take them out and swap them. I always try and have two players for each position if I can. If not, I just... I, I, they don't overplay. They're not all playing 90 minutes for eight matches and then they're knackered coming into the season. They're just getting the match fitness up quite nicely. But they're playing with other players. They're playing a lot of games and we, they all get a nice amount of matches. So they'll probably get around four to five 90 minutes each because obviously they'll be subbed on, subbed off, etc. So it's not the case of don't think about, wow, eight friendly matches, I only ever do four, that's fine. But if you do four friendly matches and you're taking players off at half time or you're taking players off, they only really play two full matches. Um, or what can happen there is if you just play 90 minutes with the same guys in four matches, your bench players aren't going to be any sort of level of match sharpness and they're going to get injured. So I like to have eight and sort of ro rotate it about. The more the better for me. Obviously, don't go and do 15. That's ridiculous. I'm, but you can probably get away with 10, honestly, and it'd be absolutely fine, especially if it's a long pre-season. Some countries have got long pre-seasons. So the more games you play, the better. But the other way to do it is in your training tab. So if we go to the calendar here and we click on just an empty slot, no problem. Now, if we go on general... And we go click on overall, for example. If we scroll down slightly here, it says team cohesion slightly increased, right? Now, we don't want slightly increased because it's just something that doesn't change it much. It's sort of just like the normal level. But what I'm trying to get to you is that these normal ones here, outfield, etc., it just slightly increases it. Now, there is three things. I said two. There's three. There's three things inside here that give this a bigger boost than slightly increased. So if we go into match preparation and match tactics, that gives increased. So it's more than slightly increased. It also gives a boost to decisions and teamwork, which is really important. And I like to use match tactics a lot. Um, I've not changed this week's training yet, but I like to use match tactics a lot in preseason. Obviously, I don't need to do it as much now. Um, I just use this basically for the attributes uh, that it's training. I don't really need the team cohesion anymore or the tactical familiarity. But if you're in pre-season, try and get in as many match tactics in a week as possible. Match tactics also, you can only do three of them. So if you do three there, you can't do a third, a fourth one. It blanks it out and it says in brackets there, three. The other one is match practice, which is the best one you can do, which is greatly increased team cohesion. It greatly increases happiness of your players. Um, it increases sharpness. Obviously, it increases fatigue as well. That's absolutely fine because you can recover after that. So what I like to do is like when sometimes it gets hit by this here. So then the bottom one, I just give it as a rest moment. So I just put a rest after the match practice, right? Uh, sorry, recovery. Recovery after. Because obviously here, you're increasing the fatigue. But here in the same day, you're reducing the fatigue. So it's sort of like a yin to that yang. But I want match tactics and match practice because it gives a greatly increased improvement to team cohesion. Obviously, as well, match practice is really good if you're struggling for happiness. Um, with morale, it's really, really good for that. The other one that's really nice for it is team bonding. Now, you can only do one team bonding a week. If I go here now and try and do another one, I can't do that. Community outreach is a weird one. It's sort of a bit redundant. I don't understand why it's there, because it only does a slightly increase. It does the, it does the impacts the team cohesion. Uh, the teamwork attribute, but so does team bonding. So community outreach doesn't seem a point to it because it's only doing the same as what these guys do. But in this one, you're also getting attributes improving. So I don't understand. They really need to rework the community outreach, maybe make it the same as this, which is increased, but um, but just make it so, so you can only do one a week. So at the moment, there's no real point doing community outreach. You might as well just do team bonding every single week in pre-season at one point. Maybe after a game, maybe here after the rest, just make them team bonding because it doesn't really do that much badly. It slightly reduces your condition, but that's absolutely fine. So those three are the ones that you guys need to use in pre-season. Obviously, if you're taking over a club in a journeyman save, maybe January near the bottom, make sure you guys have a look at the cohesion page as soon as you go in. If it's bad, get into your training, play some friendly matches, look at getting rid of some players that are maybe outside of the main social groups. If you can, if you can sort of sell them and you not, don't really need them, do that as well. It will increase your team cohesion. So those are all the ways that increase it. It's really, really useful. Honestly, I can't tell you how much I overachieve in my football manager saves because of this. Obviously, my tactics are okay. I've been playing this game for 20 plus years. Now it's ridiculous. I know I'm really old. But looking after your club and your familiarity of your tactics, which is the video before, and I've just put it above you now if you want to check it out now. It'll be at the end of the video as well. So if you always want to wait until that point, that's all for fine. 
But the team team familiarity, tactical familiarity and the cohesion are the most important things inside Football Manager. I can't tell you enough how important it is. And that is going to be the end of the video for today, guys. So if you liked it and you found some information, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button as well. That would be amazing. And come and catch us on Twitch at half past seven from Friday, Saturday and Sunday UK time. That would be amazing. And until next time, as always, I'll catch you then. Goodbye.